All right, guys, we are five, six days out from Legion Sports Fest. We are getting ready for our trip. We leave on Wednesday. Today is Monday. How many pounds of chicken, Chris? Well, you know, there's about a 13% yield on chicken, meaning how much more you need to buy than you actually get cooked weight. So I have to get 14 pounds of raw chicken and cook it, and that will last us five days. Um, I like to have a little more than enough. That's for my wife and I. And I will cook these batches, cool them, and then vacuum seal them, and then bring them with me in the airplane. Yeah, we like to stay at a hotel that actually has a kitchen. So I always choose like the residence inns, resident inns, um, which is not too far from the venue. And I don't want to cook when I'm there. Uh, people are like, oh, just cook when you're there or get a food service. Nah, I don't trust food services. Um, not when I'm in prep. I like to have control over everything in my food, make sure there's no error. I don't want to be that guy who gets, you know, a stupid problem. It would be like foodborne illness or your food doesn't show up or the food shows up and or it gets lost in transit and they get spoiled. That's just not for me. And plus when I get there, I kind of want to relax, worry about client emails, train, and worry about posing and everything I need to do for the show. I don't want to worry about cooking all this chicken in a foreign kitchen with crappy pots and pans and all that stuff. So I'd rather do it in the comfort of my own home and just go a little extra mile here. That's all. Plus, this is Bell Evans Air Chilled Chicken. It's wonderful. Yeah, we're getting there and relaxing and not having to worry about food at all but the chicken goes in our carry-ons you don't check it but tsa usually flags it so we're used to that it's the vlog of the entire trip so stay tuned one batch two batch three batch and i have three more to do and then i'll obviously weigh it again to make sure i have enough putting it in uh probably two pound shrink vacuum seal bags just to keep it easy or I'll just break it into grams. So I like to measure everything in grams now. So it might be like, you know, uh, 2,000 gram packs. That way it's just easier. This is how I cook it. It's quick. I know it looks gross, but it's not because it's Bell Evans hair chilled chicken. And then I cook it plain. And then I add things that I need. But I use mac oil and infused oils. Because digestion is flawless when I use that. None of the damn dry spices, no garlic and onion. Not for this guy. Make sure to temperature it. Got to get the polder fast through the thermometer. If you're serious about your chicken, people are always like, your chicken's so dry. It's because you don't use a the thermometer. You temp each piece to so survive as you place it into a bowl. Makes or, it super easy. Or what I do is I just find the fattest piece and make sure the fattest piece in here is okay. is done and then I'll just know that the rest are done. And know that the rest are done. Or I've done it enough times to know that by now. So it's you know, obviously that's not customary that wouldn't fly in the in the food safety service. What did you just say? I said my wife is a funny chick. Yeah, because I mess with you too much? Yeah, sometimes it's difficult when you're prepped, like, you lose your sense of humor. So it's like when someone's really goofy around you, you're kind of like, um... Stop it. Not funny. Stop it. <laughs> but I do appreciate it way more than that I get bothered by it. That's for damn sure. I'd much rather have that aspect than grumpy pants all the time. Or super seriousness, you know? You know? Very true. And the puppies. Hi, puppies. So, pro tip. If you burn the chicken, you never have to cook it again because your husband always does it. Yeah. Solid pro tip. Or if you get some weird husband who just gets all He's obsessed with cooking it. Yeah, it's great. Hey guys, it's Tuesday. Uh, last day before we fly out, so we will be doing our last leg training before his show. Um, won't be full out, of course, because depleted, you don't want to do that. Hey Siri, remind me to give the dogs butt cuts in three hours. Okay, your reminder is set for this morning. Yeah, their hair grows, okay? I have to cut it for the dog sitter. Don't judge me. Last training day before uh, we 
head out and then we train Thursday and Friday somewhere in California's. We'll have to figure that out when we get there. Bye puppies. Bye puppies. Hold them. All right, so Lex, when we get there, um, I just want to help you to help me pose. You stand in front of the camera. I don't want to make sure I don't see myself. And then I run with the poses. And then you say correct or not, and then we'll take the pictures. Then we'll do boo. Then we'll change lighting, and then we'll warm up and start training uh, a little bit of lower body, a little bit of shoulders, a little bit of abs. Deal. So you don't want to look at yourself. No, because what's the point of looking in the mirror? It's cheating. You look at the mirror, you know how to set yourself pose up correctly. Agreed. So when you're on stage, there's nobody holding a mirror up. So you got to make sure you memorize what it feels like. That's the biggest obstacle people have. So we're on the way to the gym. Um, a few days out, 25 minutes from my house. We go to Universal Fitness. It's my buddy's gym. Love it. Um, <laughs> my wife and I was making a joke. I like. He's monotone. I'm very monotone <laughs> when I'm doing prep, especially at the end. And I'm definitely not even close to coming to win the Mr. Personality Award of the month. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Well, I was talking. I was just like, by the way, like you know, it's nice to have people see your personality, but I'm like, right now, it's not a good judge of character because no, you can't. No, people be like, he's a huge dick. <laughs> no, he's just coping and. Do what he has to do. Like this. Be ready. When you don't find stepbrothers funny, you know you got a problem. Like this is stupid to yeah. And then I eat a burger and fries and a week later the show, I'm like, oh, this is pretty funny. We used to watch TV, which we haven't really been in a while. But uh, when he was prepping for his photo shoot last time, I would always try to choose a show or a movie that was just like high energy, like war it has to keep your or focus. something. Because anything else you'd be like, I can't deal with this. <laughs> it has to keep your focus or it doesn't do it. I, right now, I just want to clean, organize stuff for tomorrow, or read, learn something. And not be bothered by <laughs> And not be bothered yeah. solo and you have, I can't take pictures can't take pictures you get a tripod okay and you get a little little Bluetooth button and you set it up and you find some good lighting like I have in here I know where to stand good lighting is an accurate lighting not lighting that's gonna make you look awesome lighting that's gonna make you look the same or slightly worse that way your coach you know is consistent make accurate calls and you get a little button like this and and it's not a mouthpiece, guys. Put it in your mouth. All right. Click, click, click. And then you got it and you upload them and you go. Very simple. We're 21st century here, right? Got a lot of technology. Yeah. Please don't pass out. Mouth guard. It's like clench when I sleep. Fucks up my teeth. I've had to spend five grand of gum grafts last seven years to fix my clenching teeth because it recedes my gum line. So now I go an extra mile and using it when I train. But now when I put this in when I train, I clench even harder with this. But I, I actually like it, I prefer it. This is Johnny, we love him. Hey Johnny. <laughs> great kid. His parents own the breakfast joint that's next to this place and they are just amazing people that make amazing food. So it's Johnny's. The trick with training with somebody, particularly my husband, <laughs> I like my headphones and he hates when I can't hear him. So I only have one in when I train with him. So I have one ear open to hear him yelling at me. <laughs> it works. So we're both very broken people. <laughs> um, I have a knee injury, he's had knee injuries as you know. So we do significant warm ups. We both do a little bit of different things, but uh, we are gonna kinda train together today, but of course modify for our own issues. 
Uh, for him, he's doing his side plates. And uh, we're gonna do some hip thrusts and get warmed up. Chris drives both ways and I get to work in the car, but um, I got a good handle I work this morning. I figured I would drive while he can eat in peace. And Because it's my last high carb day and uh, Vu gave me a high carb day today, so yeah. I get to enjoy my rice and grinds. Yeah, and if peace. anyone has like competed or cut for anything, even like a photo shoot, you understand how food time can be important. <laughs> yeah, and how like you don't really want to drive and eat, which he's like a pro at doing. And apparently I'm now a pro at recording and driving. Um, but recap on the workout. Um, it wasn't like a crazy leg day. It where, can't be. Yeah, where we're pushing it to extreme, of course. It's like 70%. Yes. And no failure training. No. No drop sets either. Not even supersets, really. No. Stimulate the muscle, get a pump in there, don't get injured because my joints yeah. are fucking in pain. And how did you feel in your workout? joints feel old arthritic like a nine-year-old man well overall at least it was successful muscles were worked that should have been worked and heading back home now um he's gonna eat and we're gonna get to work <laughs> chris isn't good with the camera <laughs> that's crooked so yeah, if, if you see any weird video clips that just seems off. Or it's like your forehead's cut off, that's me. 
I said, how was your knee? My knee sucks. I felt it with uh, leg extensions a bit. I should have known. I never locked my knee in them. But I did feel a little off. So I just stayed light and tried to get some blood in the muscle before split squats. And then split squats, the first set sucked. And then uh, as I got warmed up and kind of tweaked the form a bit, it felt better. But like some days, like you're just in a negative mindset and you are like, well, my knee kills, everything's gonna suck, why am I even bothering? That's why you can't have a negative emotional response to anything. Yeah. Emotions suck. They don't do anything for you. They make you make bad decisions. So I tell people, well, you know, you get older, things happen. You just gotta go with the flow. The more you go with the flow, the better things are gonna turn out. And, and that negative mindset can easily make your workout terrible, terrible, terrible. If you stay positive, it might turn around. Yeah, and the times that it's really kind of like got me down, like I was almost like in tears at times in the past, I was so pissed off. Uh, the days that I actually pushed through it and worked through it and just found out tweaking different exercises what actually could work, I actually had decent workouts and I felt better after. The ones I like quit, you just feel bad about yourself. And then you're like in pain and you didn't get your workout done and it's like, okay, well, why the, why the fuck did I even go? <laughs> so, I, I mean, you pull it together, and you figure out what works, what doesn't, be smart about it, and leave the ego at the door, which I always had a really hard time doing. Just stop trying to do things you used to be able to do and do things you can do. The bottom line is, we all come to a point there's gonna eventually things that we're not gonna be able to do because we get older or wear and tear, then you have to adapt and move forward. If you keep trying to do the things you used to be able to do, provided you have a, an injury that's permanent, you're just gonna destroy yourself, get frustrated, and have a miserable time. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So at least we pulled it around. Chris is in the car still because uh, he's going through his photos that we took. Um, so he has to send them to Vu. So he just goes through and deletes the ones that don't work or are not consistent. And then he'll come in and basically we'll be doing work for the rest of the day and packing. And um, it's pretty much our life is just working, training, eating. And your puppies. hair grows, which means they need trips, and I'm not one of those to bring them to a place to get their hair all trimmed. No. I do it myself. Stuart! And I saved Bird or Sadie for last because she's a terror when it comes to doing anything, like checking her teeth even. Nope. Stay. Stay, bird. Oh my god, we're doing it. We gotta work quick. Oh, we got something. I'll take it. I'll take it. Good job. There you have it. Now I have to wash my hands. Hey guys, so to recap this meal, it was about 75 grams of green veggies two baby carrots um 113 grams of chicken which is my amount um i added some mediterranean herb um olive oil it's an ariston brand infused olive oils and they make the biggest difference and i just add the olive oil at the end um on top of everything and i also have some cashews in here and i just mix it all up with some salt and it's amazing i started taking this 
you can't see it, but it's called a Trantel, which is this supplement I found at the conference we were at recently. It's supposed to um, help people, mostly people with IBS like me um, overall. And I mean, I have seen some benefits since I started taking it, which has been a week, I wanna say. Um, but, so I take this with three of my meals in the day, even though I eat six. So, um, but so far so good. I'll make a review on that in some time, but well, I'll wait till I'm on it for at least 15 days. So when you live a sedentary lifestyle like we do, technically, we have to go for walks. We get it like old people and power walk. We have to power walk. We're gonna be those mall walkers at like 5 a.m. But no, really though, walking, <laughs> it reduces anxiety. Yeah. It just makes you relax. Plus it's so pretty outside. It really is. It's actually a really good temperature. It was raining earlier, but now it's not. And our road isn't isn't like bad for the sidewalk. Um, he usually walks slower than me. Uh, I just cooked some fresh batch now, which will feed us tomorrow, which I'm not going to vacuum seal, and put a Ziploc for Thursday. And then I just vacuum sealed two bags in here. So I'll freeze these. Those will go in my here we got luggage with me. And this is the last cool batch. You have to let it cool overnight though before you vacuum seal it or the condensation won't seal right and then you get the moisture in there and, and you don't want that. So I like to lay the chicken like this in here. This is Bell Evans air chilled chicken tenders. They might look weird because I cooked them in a pan. But they're so good. This is an old school vacuum seal. I've had this close to, to close to nine years. Ah, oh my God. Yeah, 2010. So you can it seals it. Let's take the air out. Again, it has to be cool overnight. And no moisture, and the moisture sucks out and then breaks the seal and won't seal it. Throw this bad boy in the freezer. Boom. Done so. Now these guys, we will make sure uh, we'll let it cool overnight. Then I'll probably vacuum seal it quick in the morning. But what I do is when I travel, I use zip locks so I can keep recycling the ice because if you're in the plane for seven hours or eight hours, the ice pack's not gonna last nor a lot of times you stay at a hotel where you have the means to be able to refreeze the freezer packs and use them again. Or TSA will throw them out if they're thawed, but I believe they changed that rule. So I use the double Ziplocs and then recycle the ice and I go through TSA and the little ice machine at McDonald's. Well, good morning everybody. Today's Wednesday and we're about to do some traveling today. And uh, what some of you guys may not be aware of is uh, I get up every morning at 3.30 without an alarm. It's really weird. I have a very set sleep schedule, but this time change has messed me up. So now it's like 2.30 and I'm, I am freaking tired now. But I still can't sleep. I just want to get up and start doing stuff, getting shit done. Because there's always so much to do in our life. Um, so my first thing I usually do when I get up, let the dogs out, go upstairs, put the coffee on, which I'm doing now. Mix my universal collagen and bone broth. I drink that. Then I brew the coffee. Then I sit my coffee and I do emails for about an hour and a half. And then we get the day going with gym and breakfast. And I'll be running that same sort of schedule today. Except um, no gym. And we leave at 8 to go to the airport instead of 8 to go to the gym. So stay tuned. I'm going to start some emails now. Rounding up. This is what I do every morning, Monday through Sunday, actually. 42. It's not too bad. But we'll get some of this done, get as much as it can get done before I leave. And obviously, all my competitors take a priority, so I'll be answering them throughout the whole, whole prep and and whatnot, and making weight and stuff. You know, what people don't realize is. If you really don't give a shit what people think, you feel so free inside. 
And I've never felt like such free willy right now. You have no idea. <laughs> free willy? Free willy. I live my life 110% on my accord. I never used to, but now I do, and I'm happier than picking shit. We're on the way to the airport. Uh, got my boy Ben here. He's gonna drop us off. I forgot to ask my mom at the last minute, and apparently I didn't, so she couldn't. Cut brain. So Ben's hooking it up. Wife's in the back seat, and we're in a little bit of traffic, but we're we're good. I always get patted down. Trapezius. <laughs> Trapezoids. Deltoids. Every Quads. time. His hat. Say hi. His, hi, how you doing? His chest. <laughs> abdominal region. Upper back. <laughs> no biceps today. <laughs> well, me. <laughs> it's all about the deltoid pec tie -in. How often do you get checked? I didn't see you last time. Every time, it's always the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. That right forward. Last meal. Well, our second meal today, basically at 9.30 a.m. Um, first flights to Atlanta. Um, and then we have two flights after that. So it'll be a very long day. And um, we'll see how we do it. So we're on the airplane heading to California for my show. I've got all first my flight. first flight. I got three. <laughs> I got all my vitals with me, all my food. Everything I need to compete is with me in my in front of my eyes. And of course my wife. And uh, we're off. Compression socks. Fucking curious. Thirty hours later, <laughs> but I just want to brag a little bit because I packed my food this morning uh, around 7:30 a.m. Eastern, Eastern time. Standard Time, and now we're at 6:11 p.m. Pacific Time, which is three hours behind. Yep. So it's been a long time, and I'm gonna pull my thermometer. And What's that say? I believe that says 32 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> it wasn't in the time temp danger zone once. We even had a flight attendant actually get us, refill us some ice because we were rushing. <laughs> 